All right, my friend, we are going on a journey today through Olympic National Park. I am here to walk you through the trip planning process as a first time visitor because this national park can be pretty complex. Um, there's a lot of things that people miss or don't notice as they're trip planning that can make or break your trip. So today I am here to talk you through this so that you can set everything up really well for your first trip to Olympic National Park. My name is Ash, I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes, and I visit Olympic quite often. It's one of my favorites for its diversity um, in both plants and species and views. There's just a lot to see and do here. So today I wanna talk you through um, and really help you make a good trip plan for your trip to Olympic. I do wanna remind you that if at any point this feels too overwhelming, you can just jump over to dirtinmyshoes.com and pick up my Olympic itinerary where it's all done for you. Everything's done. I tell you where to stay. I tell you when to be where. I tell you how to avoid the crowds, all of that. So if at any point you're just like, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, just jump over to Dirt in My Shoes and get that itinerary. But let's jump in and let's start with a nice overview of the park. So Olympic National Park is located in the very northwestern part of Washington State. Um, it's on the Olympic Peninsula and this peninsula goes into the ocean. It's also like right across the strait from Canada. So you are very far north, very far west. Um, and what makes this park so cool is that you just have such a variety of things to see. So this park is famous for its snow-capped peaks, its waterfalls, temperate rainforests, beautiful moody beaches and tide pooling. So whatever you like to do when you're out in nature, you will likely find it here in Olympic National Park. This national park is almost a million acres, and so it is a very large national park. Um, the other thing is that it does have a very high visitation with around two and a half to three million visitors per year. So it does stay very busy. It can be very complex. And what a lot of people don't realize about this park is that a lot of the roads don't meet up with each other. So you've got a lot of like dead end roads that go into this national park that makes trip planning a little bit more complex. Then you add in all the crowds, um, and so there can be some very serious crowding issues in this national park, which I will walk you through. But just as a brief overview, you will want to be aware that this is a large national park with very high visitation. So even though Olympic National Park is not that far from Seattle, it actually does take quite a bit of work to get up here. So now I'd like to walk you through just how to get here. Um, in the best and easiest way because um, chances are you're likely coming in from Seattle or thereabouts and there are a few different ways to access this park from there. I have this full article on dirtinmyshoes.com so if you do need additional help beyond what I cover today you can go read through this but basically so what we're looking at is you've got Seattle over here and here's the Olympic Peninsula over here. And a huge portion of this peninsula is Olympic National Park, pretty much all the way, I don't know, kind of all the way down to here. So it is a very large national park on this peninsula. You likely will want to fly into SeaTac, um, which is right in between Seattle and Tacoma. It's the main airport there, which is very convenient for getting to Olympic. But from there, you have a decision to make. Do you either want to drive around and up? You're going to want to make it to either Port Angeles or Forks, so the very northern part of this peninsula. Or do you want to take a ferry across the Puget Sound over here and then drive from there? So a couple different ways to get here. Either way is fine, but I'll walk you through the pros and cons. Okay, so if you fly into SeaTac, if you fly into Seattle, um, or if you're coming from the south, it makes sense to, you can fly into there or come into there and visit both Mount Rainier National Park and Olympic National Park in the same trip. So a lot of people do that. 
Um, if you're doing that, then you'll probably drive. Um, you'll drive down to Mount Rainier and then you can cut over to the coast and take Highway 101 up to Olympic National Park. And that typically is the easiest way if you're hoping to see both national parks in one trip. If you're not planning on going to Mount Rainier at all, um, then it probably will make the most sense, depending on where you're coming from, to take a ferry and just get straight to Olympic from there. Okay, so again, looking at the map, you can see these different ferry options, which just can kind of confuse people. And you'll want to check Google Maps, like if you put this into your Google Maps, because a lot of the routes will have you take a ferry. And so you want to make sure, you know, if you're not wanting to take a ferry, make sure that you take that out of the options, because there are so many ferries here in this area. And so typically, if you're flying into SeaTac, you're going to be down here. And so you can take like this Fauntleroy Southworth Ferry doesn't run as often. Same with the Edmonds Kingston. So you are going to want to pay attention to that. But you can drive up into here and you can take a ferry across that will then take you up here. You'll drive over here and come up north to the Port Angeles area. So that's an option. Again, if you're planning on going to Mount Rainier, it really doesn't make sense to do this. I would go to Mount Rainier first, which is down south here and then just cut over to Olympic. But if you're going to Olympic and you are just going straight to Olympic, a ferry is most of the time the fastest option rather than driving all the way around and up. If we're coming from North Cascades National Park, which is up in here, then we will come down and we will take this Edmonds Kingston Ferry. That one's a really good one. It runs pretty often. And so that's a good option to just get you right up here and then you just cut over to Port Angeles here. There are some other ferries up in this area, but then again, they don't run as often. And so these are kind of the main three that you'll want to look at if you're hoping to take the ferry across and just go straight to Olympic National Park. It does get a little messy and people do get really confused about just how to get to Port Angeles or Forks to see Olympic National Park. Um, so hopefully that helps kind of clear some things up for you. But um you can drive the whole way, it's fine, but if you are coming from that area, especially North Cascades, it does a lot of times make more sense just to take the ferry across and then cut over up to Port Angeles. Okay, so now let's talk about the best time to visit Olympic National Park. I do get this question a lot. The main season in Olympic is from June through September. And so if you can visit during those months, that's when you'll be there during the time that most everything is open, you should be able to get to pretty much everything in the national park. Um, but Olympic is really interesting. Again, a nod to the diversity that you'll find in this park. Um, it does affect when you can visit. And so what's cool about this park is it's actually a pretty great year round park. If you don't mind a little weather, <laughs> the weather can get a little hairy. But if you're not visiting between June through September, then you will just want to focus your trip on the coast area of Olympic and the rainforests. Um, you can get into those almost year round. You can see the coast. You can get into the rainforest. Um, rainy season is the off season, though. So just keep that in mind, especially in those rainforests that get about um, 12 feet of rain per year. Um, so do expect rain and do expect some weather. But the main part of Olympic that really closes down a little bit more is the Hurricane Ridge area, which is the area in the mountains. So if you're hoping to see Hurricane Ridge, you're hoping to get up into the mountains, maybe do some hiking, see the views, then you will pretty much want to stick to that June through September timeline. If you don't mind skipping the mountain part, um, then you could go in the off season a little bit more and just focus your time over on the coast. Which brings me to something very important that a lot of people don't realize, and that is that this park is constantly changing. Um, things are open, things are closed, they have weather events, they have construction projects, all of that. Like this is always going to be in, you know, in movement. And so um, as a first time visitor, especially just get used to checking the official Olympic website, the nps.gov website um, for any alerts or current conditions that you'll need to be aware of because things do change, um, things do happen. And so you'll want to be paying attention to that.
As I mentioned though, if you don't wanna be worrying about having to check for updates, if you, um, sometimes you can get in there and you'll see the updates and you'll be like, I still don't know what they're talking about because if you're not familiar with the park, you know, a lot of stuff isn't gonna make sense or you might not know exactly what areas they're talking about. Um, if that's you, go over to dirtinmyshoes.com and pick up my Olympic itinerary. I will link it in the video description below as well. But go pick that up because I pay attention to everything that is happening in the park during its main season. And I make sure that you know what that means and how to change your plans if needed, alternative options that you can add in if something's closed. I take care of all of that. So um, this park does get affected by weather and construction, things like that. There are closures that happen in this park every year and I can take care of that for you with the Olympic itinerary. Let's talk about how many days to plan to spend in Olympic National Park. This is a very common question that I get. Um, and I would say I would give yourself three to four days in Olympic if you can. So looking at the map of Olympic, and I know this is very zoomed out, I will zoom in here in a minute, but so we are on the Olympic Peninsula and all of this green area is Olympic National Park. So it is a huge national park. There are a lot of different areas that you can visit. And if you don't give yourself enough time, then you will just need to focus on, you know, a few areas. You won't be able to get to very many. If you can give yourself three to four days, that really gives you a good amount of time to see the main stuff and to factor in all the travel time that you need and how much it's going to take to get from place to place. So for example, what a lot of people don't realize, let me zoom in here. What a lot of people don't realize is they'll book their lodging at Port Angeles, which is kind of the main gateway town. It has the most amenities on this Olympic Peninsula. So a lot of people stay here. And from here, you're quite close to Hurricane Ridge, which is up this road here. And so you can drive up here. This will typically take you about a half a day unless you decide to do some longer hiking. You also have really easy access to the Lake Crescent area right here. So you just drive the 101 over to Lake Crescent. You can hang out at the lake. There's a couple of really cool hikes. We've got Mary Mare Falls, which is very popular from here as well. So you've got Port Angeles, you've got Lake Crescent, Hurricane Ridge. You can also pretty easily get down into the Solduck area of the park. This is where you'll find the beautiful Solduck Falls. There's some hot springs over here. So a lot of people like to come into here. Solduck Falls is one of my favorite hikes in this park. So highly, highly recommend. But you can get there pretty easily from Port Angeles. So you've got basically the three areas, Hurricane Ridge, Lake Crescent, and Solduck that are easy to get to from Port Angeles. You can pretty much cover those three areas in about two days. Um, it depends on, again, what you're kind of wanting to do. But for most first-time visitors, two days in that area is pretty sufficient. Um, but again, if you only have two days in the park, you're gonna have to cut some things out be just because of drive time and how the park is set up. It's gonna be really hard to get to all three of those areas um, with just a shorter amount of time. So if you can give yourself two days on that part of the park, now let's go back to the map and I'll show you why you want a few more days in this national park. Okay, so here we have the Port Angeles area again with those three areas. And then we have this whole side of Olympic over here that we haven't even touched at this point. And so you've got all these beaches that are part of Olympic National Park. You've got the rainforests down here that are part of Olympic National Park. At this point, it is a lot of driving to get to all these areas. And so you're going to want to give yourself another day or two just to hit this side of the park. So we have the town of Forks right here, which is kind of the main town in this area. And then, like I mentioned, you'll want to give yourself probably a day to do beaches and a half a day or so to hit at least the whole rainforest, which is the main rainforest here in Olympic. So two days-ish in the Port Angeles area, another day or two in the Forks area. That gets you to the mountains, the lakes, the waterfalls, the beaches, and the rainforests, which just trust me, you're not going to want to miss any of those. They're all spectacular. And so three to four days in this park really for me is the bare minimum when I'm there. 
So that brings me to um, how to walk you through where to stay when you're visiting Olympic National Park. Because again, it's a very large park. Um, you'll have a lot of driving between the different areas. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when I had the map up before that a lot of these sections, you just drive into something and then you drive right back out. There's no roads really going through the middle of the park. And so that is going to greatly affect where you're going to want to stay while you're in Olympic. So let's get back to the map here. As I mentioned, a lot of these roads are one-way roads. So this is the middle of Olympic National Park, but there are no roads through the middle here. So you've got, like, if you want to go to the Ho Rainforest, you come in here, you drive this really long road. It takes a while just to get in here to the rainforest. You see the rainforest, and then you just drive back out. Same with the beaches. You know, you're driving out to the beaches and then back in. Hurricane Ridge is the same way. You're driving into Hurricane Ridge and then just back in. You're not able to connect all these various places that you're wanting to see. And so that definitely affects like how much time you're spending in your car and how much time you're spending driving around. So for me, I never stay in one place for the whole time that I'm visiting Olympic unless I just don't care to see some sections of the park. I would say that the biggest mistake that people make when they're planning their trip to Olympic National Park is that they don't split their lodging, that they just stay in one place the whole time. And then if you want to get out to the other sections, it is hours of driving, like hours. It can take two, two and a half hours just to drive to the rainforest from Port Angeles. And that's one way. And so automatically, if you're wanting to get out to that part of the park from Port Angeles, you're spending like five hours in your car. And so um, that just doesn't sound fun to me. I don't like spending that much time in my car. I would rather be out exploring. And so I always recommend that you spend at least a couple nights in Port Angeles and then move your lodging to another area like Forks. Um, so that you can get to all these different parts of the park really easily without as much driving. You can check out this full article on Dirt in My Shoes that talks you through the pros and cons of each area and where to stay, and I walk you through this. But in general, when we go to the map, I will do a couple nights in the Port Angeles area. If you don't find something in Port Angeles, you could go out to Squim. That's okay. It's just a little extra driving. But that's really convenient for getting to these areas right here. And then I will move and I will move over to Forks usually. And then from Forks, I will go to the beaches. I will go to the hoe. I will do all the things out here. There are obviously some variations on this. Like if you can stay at Lake Crescent, Lake Crescent is a good middle spot for seeing both the stuff out here and kind of the beaches in the hoe over here. So if you just want to stay in one place, this Lake Crescent area is pretty good for that. It's pretty much as good as you can get in this national park. Or if you want to spend, you know, a couple nights over here to do these things and you want to go a little further than Forks, you can come down here. You can stay at Claylock. There's a lodge. There's a campground. There's a couple campgrounds right here, actually. And those are really convenient to the beaches. They're right on the water. And you're also pretty close to the hoe. So a couple different options here. I typically do not stay in these more outlying areas like Quinault or Staircase. Or you've got like Deer Park or anything over here. Those just take forever to get to any of the other spots that you want to go to. And so if you're going to stay at Olympic National Park, I would focus on the Port Angeles area for a couple nights and then the Forks area for a couple nights. Okay, so that's the more nitty gritty part of planning your trip. And again, if you need any more help with that, um, you can go to dirtmyshoes.com. I have a ton of free articles there. And then I also have my itinerary that will just do all the work for you. So there are a lot of good options to have me help even further with your trip planning. Uh, but now let's talk about some of the really fun things that you can do in Olympic that you definitely won't want to miss. So let's take you back to dirtinmyshoes.com. I have a really great article walking you through everything. Here's your top 10 that I just absolutely would not miss. You've got the beaches. I really love Rialto Beach. I love Beach 4 for tide pooling. 
You've got Hurricane Hill, which is a really beautiful hike in the mountains. Lake Crescent, which has the most perfect jumping dock. We love jumping into the lake here. It is a family favorite. Ruby Beach is just absolutely gorgeous. It's my favorite area to go to for sunset. You've got Madison Falls, lots of good waterfalls in this park. Hall of Mosses, which is part of the Ho Rainforest. Solduck Falls is probably my favorite waterfall in the park. More hiking, as I mentioned, more waterfalls. So just so many good things to do in this park. You really get the best of everything here because it doesn't matter if you love the mountains or the beach or the trees or the, the creatures, you will find all of that in Olympic National Park. So there's just such a great variety. Again, this park is huge. It takes a long time to get to all these different places, but you can plan your trip in a way that you can get to everything. Um, and to get through my list of my favorite things to do in Olympic, again, it's going to take about three to four days to do that. There are three things that I absolutely want you to know before you solidify your plans and especially like what you're hoping to do while you're at Olympic. Thing number one is that the traffic and crowding in Olympic National Park is for real. <laughs> um, I cannot emphasize this enough because you have all of those roads that just go into the middle of the park and don't connect with each other. You've got entrance stations pretty much at all of those roads. And those areas are very congested. Um, the entrance stations, actually a lot of them have started metering people in and out. And so if you get there too late in the day and the area is already full, they will make you sit there and wait until other cars come out and then they let more cars in. So this is very typical, especially at um, the Ho Rainforest. Those wait times to just get into the parking area for the rainforest can be like two hours long. Um, this also happens at Hurricane Ridge. They will meter. Um, and so if you're wanting to get up to Hurricane Ridge, you can wait for a while. I've seen this line so backed up um, as we're coming out. We've already done all our fun stuff. We've done our hiking. We made it to Hurricane Hill. Um, we've done it all and we're coming out and people are in like an hour, hour and a half long wait just to get up there. So that is something that I definitely want you to know because it does make a huge difference in your enjoyment while you're in Olympic National Park. Nobody wants to sit in a line for two hours, but unfortunately it does happen all the time to people who don't plan ahead. The second thing that you'll want to know is that this national park, because it's right on the ocean, it's got that beautiful rugged coastline, um, is that you will need to plan some around the tide schedule. You're going to want to watch those tides, especially if you're hoping to be on the beaches, if you're hoping to do any tide pooling, if you want to hike out to Hole in the Wall, which is a really cool hike and a place that we really love to tide pool but you can't get out there during high tide. And so that is something that you will need to factor into your trip planning when you're trying to decide when to be where and what you wanna see um, is once you hit those coast areas, the tides really come into play. My Olympic itinerary walks you through all of that, how to read the tide schedules, um, how to adjust your schedule based on what the tides are doing. So if you need additional help with that, go check out my itinerary. And the third thing when you're out exploring Olympic National Park is to make sure you bring layers because in no other national park will you hit so many different weird temperatures and um, just like different weather during the day. And so we just like to make sure we have lots of good layers. We always have a waterproof layer because it can be a very wet park, especially when you get over into the rainforest areas and the beaches. These are not like warm beaches. They're pretty cold. Um, and then you get up into the mountains and it can be super windy. It's called Hurricane Ridge for a reason. Um, you can get to the lake and you can swim. And so you can do all of that in the same day. And so just make sure you're bringing like a really wide variety of clothing that you can layer on and off depending on where you are and what temperature it is outside and what the weather is doing. We also plan on mosquitoes always. So I don't go to Olympic without just having lots of mosquito spray because that's pretty typical there as well. 
Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, but I really hope that it's gotten you started in the trip planning process for your first visit to Olympic. Um, hopefully this sets you up really well to have a super great vacation while you're here, to cut down on your drive time, hopefully to you know help you avoid some of the traffic and those pesky crowds, and to get around the park and see all the cool things there are to see. If you need any extra help, I have more videos on Olympic here on my channel, Dirt in My Shoes on YouTube. Um, I also have podcast episodes. It's the Exploring the National Parks podcast where we walk you through our favorite experiences and things to do in these parks and fun facts. So you can check that out. We have episodes for Olympic there. I also have a whole bunch of articles that will walk you through even deeper into the trip planning process over at dirtinmyshoes.com. So whatever you need, I've got it. Just check out dirtinmyshoes.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I am so happy that you're here and I hope that you have a fantastic trip to Olympic National Park.